Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is without a doubt my favorite game of all time alongside Minecraft. And with the introduction of the Booster Course Pass in 2022, it officially has 96 tracks. Holy crap, that's a lot. In any event, I thought I'd go ahead and rank all 96 tracks from worst to best. This list is based mostly on how fun the tracks are to drive on, but I'll also be taking into account their creativity, aesthetics, music, etc. Now, fair warning, this list has a lot of hot takes. But even if that is the case, I just want you to know that a very small amount of people who watch my videos are actually subscribed. So I'd appreciate it if you subscribe with post notifications turned on if you're new. Also, be sure to leave a like to help with the YouTube algorithm. So, without further ado, buckle up and start your engines! 96. Daisy Circuit Brain Dead Daisy fans, get out your virtual pitchforks and torches! I don't care for this track in the slightest. I mean, it's bad enough having a circuit track themed after my absolute most hated fictional character in the history of forever, but the fact that it openly ships her and Luigi? Disgusting! But aside from that, not even the layout of this track is interesting. It's so flat and none of the turns feel satisfying. I was never the biggest fan of the original music either, and it was somehow made even worse. This entire thing is just a reminder that Daisy should have never been conceptualized. Okay, let's just move on. 95, Daisy Cruiser. All right, just hear me out, okay? The idea of driving through a cruise ship is really neat, and some of the elements found in this track definitely help it when compared to the absolute fucking disgrace we just talked about. But despite everything, it's still themed after Daisy, and because of that, I just can't like it. Also, here's a newsflash for you: These two tracks are, I kid you not, the only ones in the game I genuinely dislike. 94, Baby Park. It's a really short loop, which would seem like the most boring track ever. However, because of how short it is, the races are oftentimes really cluttered up. Combine that with the 60,000 items that appear and the fact that the whole track is in anti-gravity, and you get something surprisingly chaotic. That does help the track, but at the same time, it can make things frustrating. I also like how the music speeds up with every lap. Oh, and speaking of laps, this one has seven laps instead of the usual three because of how dang short it is. All in all, this track kinda just feels like a hectic mess without too much substance. 93, Moo Moo Meadows. Some people would probably rank this track higher, but I've personally never been a huge fan. It's a basic grassy track with some subtle elevations that help immerse you in the farm vibe. There's also some cows you have to avoid near the beginning, you can trick off of the dirt piles left by Monty Moles, and there's a glider ramp you can take. While it's definitely more interesting than a 12 second oval, the overall experience of this one is still rather dull. 92, Toad Circuit. That's right, I'm the sucker who doesn't put this track in dead last. You drive on a racetrack settled in a grassy area, and there's a bunch of ginormous toad balloons around the track. It also has a shortcut ramp through some sand near the end, which adds a bit of substance. But there's really not much else to this track. A glider ramp opens up on the second lap, which is kinda neat, but again, there just isn't much to say. The track isn't necessarily bad, contrary to most people's opinions. In fact, it can actually be kinda fun sometimes. But, compared to basically every other track in the game, it's pretty bare bones. 
Not to mention the textures look like actual plastic. However, the music for this one is nothing short of slapping. It's got a really catchy melody with some cool sounding organs and brass instruments, and it definitely saves this track. 91. Donut Plains 3. It's about as simple as simple can get. You drive around a grassy plains, and there's some sharp turns, some shortcuts through the grass, a brief underwater portion, some trickable dirt piles at the end, the whole shebang. The music is pretty relaxing as well. You also gotta love how they went out of their way to arrange these item boxes in the exact same way as in Super Mario Kart. However, the track's flatness makes it kind of forgettable compared to the other. 90. Mario Circuit 3 This track was a huge slap in the face. It was already remade in Mario Kart Wii. Why not give us a new SNES track? What's even worse is the music. They went out of their way to drastically remix all the other SNES songs, and then there's this. Like, it's the same dang song! With all these negative comments, you're probably surprised this isn't at the very bottom of the list. Well, all things considered, the track is actually fun to drive on with the sheer amount of twists and turns it has, and it's visually better looking than any other SNES Mario circuit. And to be totally honest, I don't hate the song, I just think it's lazy. Like Donut Plains 3, the flatness of this track tends to steer me away from it, but to a slightly lesser extent. 89. Toad's Turnpike This is what it feels like to drive a go-kart on a real highway. This track has some cool elements to it, namely driving on the walls, tricking off of surfboard cars, and gliding off of 18-wheelers. It's also quite nice visually, and it's got a great song too. The problem with this one is the difficulty. The cars look like they'd be a huge problem, but you can actually avoid them pretty easily. Because of that, the track can be a drag sometimes. 88 Peach Gardens This is a track that seems to be forgotten in the dust, and I'm obviously not so crazy about it myself. You drive through an enormous garden with a bunch of alternating paths and grass patches, all that jazz. The Chain Chomps, Piranha Plant, and Monty Moles add some spice to the track, but it really isn't too interesting outside of that. But, the third lap having everyone complete the track backwards is pretty cool if you ask me. You can even give Luigi a high five! 87. Royal Raceway in my early days of playing Mario Kart 8, this was my most hated track for reasons I'd prefer not to share. But as time went by, I began to realize that it's actually not half bad. I mean, for a circuit track, it has a pretty zany layout, and there's a lot going on. There's a shortcut ramp through some cherry blossoms, a lake with hot air balloons hovering over it, you got Peach's castle in the background, and so on. However, I still kind of tend to avoid this one because it just doesn't appeal to me like most of the other tracks do. And the song ain't as good as its OG counterpart. 86. Sweet Sweet Canyon Okay, who snuck Sugar Rush from Wreck-It Ralph into Mario Kart? I have no idea, but man, this track makes me salivate looking at it. It's got cookies, donuts, and all your favorite baked treats. Deliciousness aside, I also didn't care for this track in my early days, but it's grown on me. It's got enough twists and turns to keep things interesting, plus there's a split path in the middle and a neat donut shortcut at the end. I always end up taking the blue path, but it's nice to have the option. The music has a really cheerful feel to it and works well with the track. However, like Royal Raceway, this one still just isn't as appealing as most of the other tracks. 85. Tokyo Blur 
the first of many city tracks in the game. This one has a very simplistic design, but you go a different route every lap, which is pretty cool if you ask me. That alone makes this one better than the other tracks we've discussed. There's also some thwomps to be found on laps 2 and 3, which is nice. However, the track feels kind of bland at some points, and it's a little short for my liking. 84. Yoshi Valley At first glance, this one just looks like your basic grass track, but it's really not. There are so many alternate routes to take, and I mean so many! In fact, it was such a mess in the original game that it had no idea who was in what position until the race was over. Getting back on the right track, the sheer amount of paths you can take in this one makes it superior to most other grass tracks. But, at the end of the day, it's still nothing too special. 83. Snowland This track wasn't too shabby in the original game, but that does not compare to this. To start, I think it's cool that most of the road is made of frozen asphalt. That's not something you see every day with your snow tracks. The track is constantly keeping you on your toes with its sharp turns and slippery physics. And it's got some belly sliding penguins on the ice section in the middle. The background is really pretty as well. However, as riveting as the ice physics can be, it can also get annoying at times. 82. GBA Mario Circuit This one doesn't have as interesting of a theme as Snowland, but the lack of slipperiness really helps. Most of the track is flat, but there's this U-turn near the beginning that's an anti-gravity and is held up with an Ultra Hand. What an obscure thing to reference! Needless to say, this change adds some much needed spice to the track, and so does the glider shortcut. My biggest gripe with this track is the song. Look how they butchered it! It was one of the catchiest songs in Mario Kart Super Circuit with its funky slap bass and groovy beat, and all that was taken away here. Thanks a lot, Nintendo! 81. Wild Woods A lot of people seem to think fairly highly of this track, but I personally never saw it as anything special. Some parts of the track admittedly do feel quite wild, and it's got a lot of elements that make it stick out from other grass tracks. You'll drive through massive trees, glide by a Shy Guy village, drift across some running water, and jump from leaf pad to leaf pad at the end. Those help immerse you in the wildness of these woods. But my lordy, this music is just awful! The instruments are so grating, and the front-running beat is way too fast! 80. Ice Ice Outpost And here's a track with a symptom opposite of Wild Woods. Most people absolutely despise this one, but I've never really had anything against it. I understand the slippery driving can make things annoying, but the track has some things going for it that honestly cancel out the ice physics, at least for me. I like how the entire track is split between a yellow and a green pack, and it's got some neat ice shortcuts that don't actually need mushrooms, just really good drifting. Well, maybe not this one. But the others do for sure. The song has a pretty nice vibe to it as well, with its intricate combination of synth, violin, and rhythm guitar. 79. Paris Promenade The very first track of the Booster Course Pass. Honestly, it's a pretty good choice to introduce you to the madness that is the Booster Course Pass. Unlike Tokyo Blur, the first two laps of this track are the same. It's the third lap where things get interesting. That does mean there aren't as many routes as Tokyo Blur, but this one has a better layout in my opinion. I gotta say, gliding towards the Eiffel Tower is such a beautiful sight, even if the textures are plain. 
This one also has a giant piranha plant, which you'll probably never get hit by, but it's neat that it's there. The music is also a perfect fit for the track's mood. 78, Rosalina's Ice World. This track was kind of forgettable in Mario Kart 7, and admittedly, it's still not incredible, but it sure as hell looks pretty. And I'll admit that I was extremely thankful that Wave 6 had a 3DS track at all. As the name implies, you're mostly driving on icy roads, and those roads do be slippery, but you'll also take a dive into the water starting on lap 2, and the end has you driving through a cave with some ice shards that'll slow you down if you hit them. It's a nice bit of variety. But what really blew me away about this track is the song. It was just meh in Mario Kart 7, but here, it's actually kind of fire. 77, Cheap Cheap Beach. For a beach track, this one has a pretty good variety of locales. You start off on a dock, then you drive by the sea, and then next thing you know, you're in a tropical forest. This helps keep the track nice and fresh, but it's still nothing too crazy. All of the underwater sections add some nice substance to the track as well and the music is pretty meditative. 76, Sherbert Lane. Holy fire spitting dragons, talk about an upgrade. The original version of this track is my third least favorite Mario Kart track of all time, but this remake is really decent. The night sky with the Aurora Borealis is simply gorgeous. And the track takes you across a frozen lake, through a cave, and so on. The freezies are way less of an issue compared to the OG, and the added underwater parts are great. What brings this one down is the fact that driving on it still feels kind of clunky and slippery, as you'd expect from an ice track. 75. Mushroom Gorge Mushrooms are one of the most prominent features of Mario games, so Nintendo decided to make a track themed after them. Bouncing on the red mushrooms is a really fun experience, although the actual layout of the track isn't the most interesting. I never quite understood the random cave section, but I like it. It's also cool that you can trick off the edges of the green mushrooms now, at least to me. They even kept the glider mushroom from Mario Kart 7. Also, this shortcut on the beginning with the two mushrooms is straight up epic. 74, Calamari Desert. You drive around a dark sanded desert with some plateaus, or I guess mesas surrounding it, and there's a train that runs by. I was never really a fan of this one in Mario Kart 64 or Mario Kart 7, but there's one change in this version that makes it so much better. It starts off like the original version, but you notice a blue arrow field on the train tracks and you're like, what? What's that doing there? You complete the first lap, and once you get to the train tracks, there's this metal girder platform thing. You end up on it, and next thing you know, you're driving on the train tracks! I don't care who you are, that's straight up cool as hell. And also kind of dangerous if you think about it. 73, Mario Circuit. This track goes absolutely bonkers with the anti-gravity, having it flip upside down about halfway through. It actually took me a while to notice that this track is inspired by a Mobius strip, but once you take a good look at it, the inspiration really isn't subtle at all. It's fun going around the really long turns on this one, and it's got a pretty catchy song, too. I also love hitting the Mario Kart sign while I'm gliding. However, as cool as the whole Mobius thing is, the layout of this one is really simplistic, so there are plenty of better options out there. 72, Shy Guy Falls. This is another track that's really popular among fans, and I can honestly see why. Like, you're literally driving up a waterfall at one point. 
That's freaking dope! Even the rest of the track is pretty adrenaline pumping, and the landscape is really nice to look at. What drives me away from this one is the music. Holy crap, does it bleed my ears. I will say though that the Shy Guys chiming in at the end is kind of adorable. 71, Animal Crossing. The layout of this one is relatively simple compared to the other base game DLC, but what makes it so interesting is its RNG factor. It randomly changes seasons every time you play it. It doesn't change the layout, but it does change the aesthetics and a couple other small things. That one feature really helps this track, cause otherwise it's not very saucy. There are a lot of cute references though, so points for that. 70. New York Minute I've never been to New York before, but I'd really like to someday. This track takes you around some of New York City's biggest features, such as Central Park, Times Square, and Rockefeller Center. It would have been nice if there were features from other parts of the city, like maybe the Brooklyn Bridge or something, but I'm not complaining. The night aesthetic is perfect for this track, and there's more interesting paths than the other two city tracks we've covered. However, the overall layout is still pretty basic, and things can get pretty hectic on this one with the items. 69. Sunset Wilds For a desert track, this one has some surprisingly nice colors. It also has sharp turns, a giant muddy puddle with trickable speed boosts, and shy guys dancing around. There's a lot of shortcuts you can take, including one with a ramp through the Shy Guy tents. Unlike most of the other GBA tracks, a majority of this one is still flat, but it's an enjoyable ride nonetheless. But there is one problem that makes this by far the most disappointing remake, and that's the fact that the scene no longer gets darker with every lap. I mean, why bring this track back if the one feature that made it so unique is gone? Now it's just 7.30 p.m. wilds! Don't get me wrong, I enjoy racing on this one, but the fact that they chose this instead of, oh I don't know, Bowser Castle 4? Is so dumb. I'm sure we can all agree there. 68. Dry Dry Desert for the most part, it's a pretty typical desert course with some falling pillars, pokies, and rigid turns. But then you encounter this big pit of, I guess, quicksand that could easily lead to your death if you try to drive through it, and then there's an oasis with some grass blobs and soul sand water columns in it. Those help this one stick out from most other desert tracks, and the flow of this one doesn't feel too shabby. It is kind of unfortunate that they got rid of the tornado and the piranha plant head in the quicksand, but unlike everyone else, I'm not openly whining about it. The music is perfect for this track as well, not to mention it's infinitely better than that disgusting song from Double Dash. 67. Maple Treeway in my early days of playing Mario Kart, I wasn't impressed with this track at all, but I've slowly come to appreciate how crazy it is. You're literally cruising through a super massive tree like you're Tarzan. There's also a massive cannon shot at the beginning, random leaf piles that occasionally drop mushrooms, and a half pipe towards the end. Most people seem to dislike the removal of the bouncing bridge, but honestly, I couldn't care less. Bridge, no bridge, it doesn't matter to me. You also gotta love those gigantic wigglers in the big circle. They aren't nearly as big a threat as they used to be, but they still add some oomph to the track. 66. Toad Harbor This track draws inspiration from real-life American cities which is super cool. Most of it is based on San Francisco, but there's also a statue of Peach which is very obviously based on Lady Liberty. 
Outside of that, this track has a lot of other neat features. You can trick off a boat, ride on the walls of the massive U-turn, and it has you riding through a market near the beginning. The flow is pretty good here, and the amount of stuff in the track really keeps you occupied. The music is pretty solid too. It's got a really uplifting vibe to it. 65 Excite Bike Arena. First things first, an entire track based on the game Excite Bike is such a cool idea. And that's not even the best part. The track is technically just a loop, but it's a lot longer than Baby Park, and there's 10 bajillion ramps you can trick off of. What makes this one so cool is that the position of the ramps changes every time you race on it. That's amazing! It's like having 700 tracks all morphed into one. That also means you're never too sure of what's coming. The ramps themselves also look exactly like the ramps in Excite Bike. Although, outside of tricking, there really isn't much to do on this track, but I still get plenty of enjoyment from all the tricking. Not to mention, the song for this one is incredible! 64 Sky High Sunday It's Sweet Sweet Canyon, but made of frozen treats instead of baked treats. Actually, it's more like Excite Bike Arena than anything else. It's just a simple loop with a crap ton of trickable ramps, but this time, the ramps don't change, and you're in anti-gravity the whole time, making the tricking even more enjoyable. There's also some nice verticality and a glider section, and for some reason, these rails are spin boosters. Like Sweet Sweet Canyon, this track looks absolutely delicious, and the colors are just beautiful. The music for this one is solid as well. It feels exciting and adventurous, which doesn't exactly fit the mood of the track, but I'm really not complaining at all. It's way better than all of the other songs in Wave 2. Well, except for one. 63. Water Park By far one of the most interesting takes on a water-themed track. It has you driving through what feels like a flooded theme park with an underwater roller coaster and a ferris wheel at the end. A good chunk of this track is spent under the water, which really immerses you into the vibe. There's plenty of things going on as well, such as an anti-gravity loop and a glider at the end. Although, for a track called Water Park, it doesn't really feel like a water park. Nevertheless, this track ain't too shabby. 62. Dolphin Shoals This is also a really cool take on a water track. It takes you through this ocean or something with tons of rocky formations and some dolphins at the beginning. Then you find yourself in this underwater chasm with a bunch of air blowing pipes and then you're driving on top of an eel! How cool is that? A lot of people really like the jazzy music from when you exit the cave, but I always found it overrated. There's nothing wrong with jazz per se, but it's a bit much for me. All in all, this track takes the typical aspects of a water track and flips it on its head, and the result is simply great. 61. SNES Rainbow Road Nintendo really likes remaking this track, and honestly, I can't blame them. It's a true classic with its radiant thwomps, sharp turns, and pixel-like road. This version of the track unfortunately doesn't take place in outer space, but the color pulsating domes do look pretty snazzy. There isn't too much to do on this track outside of the occasional trick, be it from the wavy road or the periodic jump ramps, but it's fun enough to keep you on your toes. This track was a lot more impressive all those years ago, but the modern ones have caught up with it and then some. On another note, the song for this one is really underrated. Sure, it sounds nothing like the original song, 
but the techno vibe honestly works pretty well with this particular track. 60 Yoshi Circuit. For starters, that name is taken quite literally. The track is shaped like Yoshi, which makes for a really twisty, turvy race. The sheer amount of drifting needed on this track is more than enough to keep you occupied, and all the surrounding greenery is certainly appealing. There's also a really cool waterfall shortcut you can take near the beginning. This one has a level of enjoyment few circuit tracks can compare to. 59. Sky Garden Only Nintendo would mix clouds and plants together in a racetrack. This one's got a mythical vibe going for it, and the landscape is so gorgeous. The added leaf shortcut, mushroom, and glider at the end really add to the airiness as well. What's unfortunate about this one is the layout is a lot simpler. I imagine driving on it would be a lot more entertaining if it kept the old layout. Don't get me wrong though, it's still fun even with the simplified design. The remixed song is also really solid, which sounds surprising coming out of me since I'm not a huge fan of orchestra music. But none of the instruments are particularly unpleasant in this one, plus it has an electric guitar. However, I will come out and say that the Mario Kart Tour remix is superior to this one. 58. Ninja Hideaway A lot of people seem to say this is one of the best Mario Kart tracks ever, but I personally would only give it like a 7 out of 10 at most. But that's not to say it's not interesting. Making a track themed after ninjas is a really cool and creative idea. It takes you through some Japanese hideout, and you can choose to stay on the top or bottom levels, which to me has kind of a similar vibe to the whole split road stick from Ice Ice Outpost. You could go through a single lap with like six different route combos. There's also ninja stars that make your cart spin out, a bunch of wind geysers that boost you up, a fun little gliding section, and ninja shy guys all over. 57. Mary Mountain Wave 3, as I'm sure all of you know, was released in December, aka the month of Christmas. And what better way to celebrate early than with a Christmas-themed track? You can't describe this one any other way than with the word wholesome. It absolutely nails the vibe of winter with all the Christmassy structures and snowy roads and prominent red and green. It really feels like you're cruising through the North Pole. It even has an anti-gravity section at the end with a half pipe and you can take a shortcut through the big presents. Christmas is also by far my favorite holiday, so plus points for that as well. However, at the end of the day, this one is kind of just a glorified oval. 56. Riverside Park Like Snowland, this track got a ridiculous visual overhaul, and it's very pleasing. It takes you through a late afternoon jungle with a river flowing through it, and at the end, you go on a loop through a cave with a waterfall and some glowing mushrooms. You also find a bunch of walking piranha plants, which carry bananas or mushrooms. The track is short, but twisty enough to not be boring in the slightest. Jumping through the waterfall at the end and getting a money shot of the gorgeous landscape is really something as well. The music fits with the jungly aesthetic, but I'm personally not too keen on it. 55. Bangkok Rush This condensed take on Bangkok, Thailand has a lot of different locales, including the Chow Praia River, Lat Rot Fai, BTS Skytrain, and much more. I definitely mispronounced those. There's a lot to look at, and it has a really nice sunset. 
This is also one of the few Mario Kart tracks to feature these little crabs. A lot of fun can be had on this one, but like Shy Guy Falls, the horribly ear-piercing song prompts me to choose other tracks. 54, Mario Kart Stadium. Yeah, I'm also shooketh that the very first track is this high on the list. But it's genuinely great! The nighttime city aesthetic is absolutely gorgeous, the track does a good job showcasing the anti-gravity, and it's got a little bit of everything. A sharp turn here, a shortcut ramp there, and a nice glider section at the end. There's also helicopters flying around and fireworks in the sky. The whole thing is just a grand old time. Even the music is really exciting. It's filled to the brim with trumpets and guitars, and it just screams, yeah, you're in for a crazy adventure. And that guitar solo at the end just gives me life. This is the only Mario Kart where the first track isn't a dull experience, which is one of the many reasons it's the best one. 53. Coconut Mall. This is another track that I've slowly come to like. Driving through a mall is such a bizarre experience, and the track is really fun to race on. You'll go on escalators, trick off of water fountains, and ride through a parking lot with cars that do donuts on occasion. There's even a shortcut that takes you through one of the stores, and the first U-turn has some World 1-1 stuff decorating the walls, which is cool. And the goofy-ass song just makes it all the better. I also really appreciate that Nintendo went out of their way to fix the cars when they released Wave 2. Them being still just didn't feel right. I mean, it should have been like that from the start, but what are you gonna do? 52, Piranha Plant Co. I was hoping we'd get Piranha Plant Pipeline, but honestly, it was just from the music. But it really is a thousand times better than this song, just saying. In any event, this track takes liberties from the city tracks by having multiple different routes, which is neato. You drive through this ancient underwater ruins, and you'll see some sunken pirate ships on lap 3. Homage to Wario Shipyard, perhaps? There are also some obstacles to dodge every here and there, one of which is a scary eel. I wouldn't try to drive on top of him. There are also plenty of big rises and drops in this one, and that's always fun. We also finally have another track that starts underwater! Dolphin Shoals thought it was a one and done deal, but nope! 51. DS Mario Circuit Most people were definitely upset to see another circuit track get added, but to them I say, WHO CARES?! This is one of the most interesting circuit tracks out there, and it hasn't been remade before. Not to mention, Wave 4 was released right around Mario Day, so you know, gotta represent! In any event, outside of the fun layout this track offers, it has other elements that keep it fresh. Goombas, fire piranha plants, a tunnel that looks like a pipe, a pretty forest, and a huge wiggler that comes out to play on the third lap. Well, it actually has a set time before waking up, but if you're like me and only play in 150cc, then yeah, it comes out by the third lap. The biggest highlight of this track, though, has to be the music. It is seriously catchy, and I love it. Although, I totally understand the frustration that the DS tracks ended with this and not something like Airship Fortress or Luigi's Mansion. 50. Boo Lake. The things they did to this one are just insane. It's the first track in the Booster Course Pass that properly uses anti-gravity, half the track takes place underwater, and the elevation changes are far crazier than any of the other GBA tracks in the past. 
The spooky vibes are also real with this one, with the depressing night sky and scary dead trees. There even appears to be some kind of wispy substance on the planks at certain parts, which is really cool. This track will definitely have you on your toes. Some of the turns are crazy, and there's a lot of them too. You can even take a little shortcut across a ledge with these bush cutouts. My only qualm with this one is that it's really short, so it's over before you know it. But regardless, it's one hell of a ride, and easily the best GBA track in the BCP. 49. Super Bell Subway Using trains as transport has never really been appealing to me, but this track is more than appealing. It's really cool that we drive inside the subway tunnels with the trains passing by, and you can even ride on top of the trains if you drop off of the metal platforms. Isn't that dope? The scenery in the above ground part is pretty pleasant, while the tunnel has a more dark and mysterious vibe. It can be pretty riveting going around the sharp turns trying to avoid the trains, especially the ones that move towards you. The tunnels even have graffiti on the walls, and some of it looks like World 1 too. The music for this one is also enjoyable. 48. Bone Dry Dunes One of the most underrated tracks in the game. Most people view it as just another boring old desert course, but I personally think it really sticks out among the others. For one, the red sand aesthetic is something only Calamari Desert can compare to. The track is also pretty fun to drive on if you ask me. It's pretty cool that one of the roads is made of bones. Like, try and name me another track that has a feature like that. The giant dry Bowser head engraved into the cave entrance is really sick too. I also love how there's a boat just cruising through the sand. How is it even doing that? Is the sand secretly water? I'm just getting my head into the clouds at this point. Bottom line is, the hate this track gets is way out of line. 47. Sunshine Airport This track has a lot of really cool elements to it. You can literally drive on the wings of a plane at one point, and you glide along with the planes in motion at the end which has a really surreal vibe. It takes all of the good stuff about flying and fuses it into a really fun track. Not to mention, it references Mario Sunshine. It's gone, but not forgotten. Kinda like a certain other Nintendo IP. The song for this one is solid as well. It's not the best the game has to offer, but it's far from bad. 46. DK Jungle. Now this is a grass track done right. The whole thing is one massive reference to Donkey Kong Country Returns, which is awesome. And there's a lot to be found. You'll dodge some bouncing tiki heads, cruise through an ancient temple while in anti-gravity, and fly past some big screaming pillars above the water. You'll even see DK's house near the Tiki Heads, and the song is a remix of Jungle Hijinks. And somehow, all of those features meshed together works really well, and the track is a blast to play on. This track makes me want a new DK game in the near future. 45. Sydney Sprint this is where the tour tracks started to get bonkers. It takes you through some of Sydney's biggest features like the Opera House, the Harbor Bridge, Luna Park, and much more. The flow of this one is great, and the sheer amount of changes from lap to lap really keeps you on your toes. The section of ramps on the Harbor Bridge gives me vibes of Excite Bike Arena and Sky High Sunday, and that's not a bad thing. The landscape is pretty pleasing as well. Seeing this track makes me believe that visiting Australia maybe isn't such a bad idea after all. 44. Los Angeles Laps 
Being American myself, I appreciate that my home country got two tracks. But it also just makes sense since there's a lot of diversity when it comes to American cities. While this track has more straightaways than Sydney Sprint, there's one thing about it that really sticks out amongst the other tour tracks. And that's the fact that every single lap starts in a different place. So it's kinda like Mount Wario or N64 Rainbow Road if you think about it. But that's not the only selling point. Plenty of fun can be had on this one, and there are a lot of different settings too. You start off on Venice Beach, then you dive into the urban area and glide over Dodger Stadium, and then... An oil field? Why not have us drive through a Hollywood movie studio? But that's really my only complaint. The rest of the track is great. The jazzy music piece is pretty nice as well. And unfortunately lost the funny vocals, but the cleaner sound makes up for it. 43. Thwomp Ruins Thwomps finally have their own track instead of being tethered to Bowser's castle. This track has you driving through some ancient ruins with a bunch of thwomps all around it. It has a really desolate vibe to it, and the layout is solid. You can drive on the walls, take a dip into the water, and attempt to cross this really narrow, rocky platform to save a bit of time. There's a lot going on with this one, and it's a really swell time. 42. Amsterdam Drift This track has some really rigid turns, and parts of it can be challenging to navigate. But once you figure it out, it's a ton of fun. It takes you through places like the Zanseshans and Krikenhav Tulip Field, and you can see other structures like the Central Station and Risk Museum. I definitely messed all those up. But what's cool about this one is that it has you driving underwater through the city's canals, and they have some air blasts you can trick off of. One of them even lets you ride on top of a boat. This adds some hefty substance and makes it stick out from the other tour tracks. I'm also weirdly fascinated by the music, cause one of the leading instruments is vocals of all things. There's nothing wrong with that, it's just so out there when you compare it to basically every other Mario Kart song there is. 41. Cheese Land If you thought Boo Lake's changes were crazy, oh, that's nothing compared to this. This one has extreme elevation changes, new shortcuts, a bunch of new cheese structures, a huge anti-gravity section, and chain chomps. You can even perform tricks off of the little cheese holes you find. I experienced this version before the original because I never owned a GBA, but I bet if that were false, I wouldn't have remembered what the original track looked like after playing this. It almost feels like a totally different track. As sweet as this track is, I do have two big gripes about it. One, why did they give it a desert aesthetic? It just seems weird for a track that's meant to be made of cheese. Two, they once again butchered the song for this one. It's not as big a downgrade as the circuit theme, but there's still no competition between the two. 40. Squeaky Clean Sprint Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the silliest idea for a racetrack ever conceived. All things considered though, this is actually a really fun track, though I obviously don't like it as much as most people. It takes you through an enormous bathroom, kind of like an expansion of Riven Road. You drive through a sink at the beginning, then you get sucked into the drain of a bathtub, and starting on lap 2, the toilet spews out water that you can trick off of. That's actually really nasty if you think about it. The amount of things going on makes for a really zany experience, and the landscape does indeed look squeaky clean. 
especially for a bathroom. 39. Vancouver Velocity. First of all, that is a great name. This is an absolutely beautiful track with its bright colors, wintry landscape, night sky, and aurora borealis. A good majority of it takes place outside the urban area, which is fairly unique for one of these tracks. And that doesn't make it any less entertaining. You'll drive through a snowy forest on the Capilano Suspension Bridge next to the Lost Lagoon and through Rogers Arena with ice skating Shy Guys. All of these locales mesh really well together, and it's a swell experience. Also, finally a city track with anti-gravity. The music is great as well. It fits perfectly with the track's mood. 38. Berlin Byways Similar to Amsterdam Drift, this one can be challenging on your first attempt due to all the traffic there is. It's actually the only city track that features traffic. The route changes are just as crazy as any other post-Wave 2 tour track, and the added obstacles make for a really enjoyable ride. You drive through the cityscape and see structures including the Brandenburg Gate, Berlin Hauptbahnhof, Schiller Monument, Berlin Wall, and Tiergarten. This is the only track in Mario Kart history to utilize WAMPs, and I'm all there for it. The flow is also pretty good, but one of the biggest highlights of this one is the music. It starts off as aggressive techno, and we all know how much Germans love their electronic music, and then it changes to this orchestra that's inspired by Germany's national anthem. Isn't that awesome? Unfortunately, it's not as good as its tour counterpart, but it's still a great listen. 37. Shroom Ridge Call me crazy all you want, but I have always found this track severely underappreciated. Its theme is admittedly kinda monotonous, but it was executed really well here. With the peaceful environment and plenty of vehicles, it almost feels like you're going on a road trip with your family. It has the surfboard cars from Toad's Turnpike as well. That's always fun. The two added shortcuts are really nice too. I especially like the one with the wind gust. Ugh, it feels so good to go over. Aside from that, the track's layout is drift heaven, and the aesthetics are pleasing, but like the other Wave 1 tracks, the textures look jarringly plain. When this track was revealed, I was extremely worried about the song. I feared Nintendo was going to pull off a GBA cheese land and make the song not electronic, but lo and behold, they actually didn't do that. In fact, I don't think they could have remixed it better. It's a perfect! 36. Wario's Goldmine In my early days of playing Mario Kart Wii, I hated this track as I'm sure a lot of people did. When I saw it was a part of Mario Kart 8's DLC, I was kinda worried. When I actually played it though, I was flabbergasted at how much I enjoyed it. All that enjoyment rooted from one change, which I'll get to in a bit. The track is super zany with really steep slopes, a bunch of bats in the start of the mine, and the mine itself is in anti-gravity. And that's the change that got me into this version of the track. The minecarts don't hurt you anymore! They actually give you a boost. Some people would argue that that makes the track worse cause it lowers the danger. Well, you know what I gotta say to that? You're full of sh**! Ranting aside, this one is super entertaining, and the song is so goofy and it's great. 35. London Loop Serious question, why do people actually think this track is worse than Tokyo Blur? It's infuriating, I tells ya! 
Anyways, for this track, you drive through the depths of London and get to see some of its prized features like Big Ben, the London Eye, Leiden Hall Market, the Tower of London, and the Shard. It even has the awesome double-decker buses the UK is known for. From what I know about England, this track represents it pretty accurately. My favorite part about this one is the chain chomps. They start off as your average chain chomps, but by the third lap, they're set loose and bounce on the track with you. There's even one that bounces through the River Thames, which is just hilarious. And oh my god, the song for this track is the definition of awesome. It even references the British Invasion, which is dope as hell. 34. Singapore Speedway By far the best looking tour track other than Vancouver Velocity. The bright colors blended with the dark blue sky are nothing short of gorgeous. You'll drive through some of Singapore's coolest creations like the Marina Bay Sands, Helix Bridge, Chinatown, and others. Before Wave 5, this one had the craziest route changes out of all the tour tracks. Cause Lap 3 starts in a totally different place than all the other laps. The design of this track is nothing short of great, and it flows really nicely. The song for this one is also one of the most improved songs in the game. It went from something disappointingly mediocre to a throbbing banger. The Splatoon-like vocals also give me a little giggle. 33. Moonview Highway This is basically a more hectic version of Toad's Turnpike and or Shroom Ridge. It's one of my most nostalgic tracks by far, and it felt so good to play it again when Wave 5 came out. The layout is relatively basic, but the gazillion speed boosts plus all the traffic makes it pretty riveting. And who could forget the infamous bomb cars? They're pretty scary when they just come out of nowhere. The surfboard cars are here as well. You're constantly on your toes in this one, and the banger song just adds to the frenzy. I also love the aesthetics in this one. It's amazing how Nintendo can make Night look so alive. 32. Rome Avanti. Talk about exquisite! This track takes you through the depths of Rome, Italy at night, and there's some beautiful architecture to see. It takes you through the Colosseum at two different points, one of which has chain chomps that try to end your life. It also features landmarks including the Spanish Steps, Piazza Navona, and the Trevi Fountain. Turns and jumps are constantly coming your way in this one, so it's hard to not be entertained. They can get pretty ridiculous as well. While Berlin Byways has WAPs, this track has both rocky wrenches and fuzzies, which is sick. Unfortunately, the music pales in comparison to the track, but unlike some other songs, it's not much of a repellent. 31. Madrid Drive This track is a fiesta indeed. The layout is crazy, and there's quite a few different obstacles. It takes you through some of the highlights of Madrid, including Prado Museum, the Market of San Miguel, Atocha Station, Plaza Mayor, and the Santiago Bernabeu Stadium. The stadium is one of my favorite parts of the track. It feels really riveting having to avoid giant soccer balls while also going over speed boosts. And what's kicking said soccer balls is Shoe Goombas, which is just perfect. The rest of the track is really entertaining too, and the scenery is gorgeous. There's even a nice gliding section over the waters of Retiro Park, and you can trick off of the spouts. And if you like Conquistador music, this song certainly delivers. I know I enjoy it. 
30, Yoshi's Island. According to a community post I saw on YouTube, this was the track from the Fruit Cup that people were most excited about. I was personally more excited about DK Summit, but when I first played this track, I could instantly tell why it was the most popular pick. For starters, it's got a unique starting jingle and results theme like the F-Zero tracks. This one also has its own victory theme, which has never been done before. And we're just getting started. The track takes you through like 10 different settings. A forest, a lake, a cave, a castle, a volcano, and a cloudy run. And it somehow all works together. You can also see a bunch of enemies from the game Yoshi's Island around the track, and it has unique coins. The attention to detail in this track is absolutely phenomenal, and the track itself is fun to drive on as well. The song is also a remix of the athletic theme from Yoshi's Island, and I couldn't see any other song but that for a racetrack. 29. TikTok Clock Making a track inspired by one of the most infamous levels from Super Mario 64 is an idea you probably wouldn't expect out of Nintendo, but here it is. This track got an insane glow up compared to its original. It takes you through the insides of an enormous clock, and you'll trick off a clock hands, avoid pendulums, and right on top of rotating gears. The obstacles even move in the same way a clock's features do. The whole thing is such a wacky experience, and it's tons of fun. I assume some people don't like that the clock hands are trickable instead of being harmful, but once again, I think that's bull. The pendulums are also a lot less annoying than the one in the original. 20A, N64 Rainbow Run. This track also got a massive glow up. Nintendo understood how ridiculously long it was in Mario Kart 64, so they condensed it down to one long lap. The guardrails are used a lot more sparingly, there's a ton of anti-gravity sections, the neon faces have been turned into fireworks, there's a city underneath the track, the chain chumps bounce on the road and make it all wavy, and there's even a flying train that drops coins on the road. It feels nothing like the original, which is honestly a good thing. The track is way more fun this time around, but it almost feels too short now. I think it would have benefited from being two laps like Wario Coliseum. I also forgot to mention, the music is a MAJOR improvement over the original. That might be an unpopular opinion, but I don't care. 27. Athens Dash I never would have expected this to be my favorite tour track, but it's just so crazily dynamic and immersive. The massive drops and rises gives me some serious vibes of tracks like Rock Rock Mountain, which is a good thing. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. You drive through numerous parts of the Acropolis, glide over a part of the town, and at the end, you have to avoid rolling boulders. Structures including the Parthenon, Theater of Dionysus, Hadrian's Arch, and a giant statue of Athena can be found. The whole thing is such a wild experience, and I'm all there for it. The uplifting music really fits with the vibe of the track as well. However, what's weird is that most of the track has great graphics, and then the town buildings look like this. It's so jarring seeing that in an otherwise gorgeous track. 26. Cloudtop Cruise As great as Sky Garden is, it just doesn't compare to this. 
First of all, the sheer amount of Bowser motifs in this track put a huge smile on my face. Seeing as how he's my favorite fictional character ever. The track itself has you driving on clouds for most of the beginning, but then out of nowhere, you're on an airship. But the best part of this track is for sure the thundercloud. It puts you into anti-gravity, and you gotta avoid a bunch of little lightning strikes that zap the speed boosts. This part gives me vibes of the lightning racetracks from F-Zero GX, and that's awesome! Not to mention the music becomes an absolutely rockin' jam! The normal song isn't too bad, but it's absolutely nothing compared to this. I also just have to give a shout out to the little snippet from Gusty Garden Galaxy. 25. Ribbon Row. Holy fudge. Nintendo just went absolutely banana pants on this one. It feels like a completely different track. The whole thing takes place in a child's room on a road made of, you guessed it, ribbons. This one also has some Bowser motifs in it, but they're nowhere near as prominent as the ones in Cloudtop Cruise. The track is super fun to drive around with rigid turns, plenty of jumps, and an anti-gravity section with wavy roads and tough but satisfying shortcuts. It really brings out the inner seven-year-old of anyone that races on it. It's like a child's imagination brought to life. I'll also never understand why they decided to make the song surfing music, but hey, I dig it. 24. Choco Mountain Choco? Choco? I really don't know. Let me know how you pronounce it in the comments. This is one of those tracks where the fact that it's a Mario Kart Tour port isn't a bad thing. The added cave and glider section make it feel way more like an actual mountain compared to the original, and it just seems a lot bigger in general. With that aside, this is a sweet ride, with some fun curves and falling boulders at the end. They removed the danger factor by adding a fence to this upper portion here, but honestly, I view that as a good thing. The fact that it was so easy to go from first to dead last made the track frustrating at times. There are even legitimate shortcuts now, and the goofy western song makes the experience all the better. 23. DK Mountain I was pretty stoked to see this track coming back, and let me tell ya, it did not disappoint. Visually, this one is pretty much just as good as the base game, which is a fairly rare occurrence when it comes to the booster course pass. The actual track is a great time as well. It starts off with a big cannon shot towards this angry volcano, and then you careen down the summit while tricking off of ramps and half pipes and avoiding falling boulders. The turns here are just insane, even with the bikes. And at the very end, you ride across this pulsating bridge that can be tricked off of. It's a really exhilarating experience, and it captures the feeling of a mountain to perfection. The music also just makes you want to go monkey mode. I don't really like it, but I can see why it would excite other people. 22. DK Summit Fuse DK Mountain and DK Pass together, and you get this bad boy. This is another really nostalgic track for me. It was a blast in Mario Kart Wii, and it's even more of a blast in this game. It takes you down a snowy mountain, and there's a lot of deep snow patches that slow you down and half pipes to trick off of. This makes for a really entertaining ride even though the track's layout looks kind of basic. Like DK Mountain, it really does feel mountainous, and the ending with the snowboarding Shy Guys is totally rad. Just look at him having a good time! 
And guess what? The big gap shortcut is still possible! Not to mention that the half pipes in this one feel just as janky as in Mario Kart Wii. And holy sh! The song for this one is unbelievable! You know, it's really surprising to have a drum and bass song in Mario Kart. Maybe someday we'll get a dubstep song. Oh wait, there already is one! 21. Hyrule Circuit. A Legend of Zelda track in Mario Kart? Yes, please! The aesthetics of this track are nothing short of astonishing, and it has so many elements from the Zelda games. It takes you through Hyrule Field and Hyrule Castle, the coins are replaced with rupees and have unique sounds, the piranha plants are replaced with Deku Babas, and the item roulette sounds like the chess jingle from Ocarina of Time. Another really cool feature is that when you go inside Hyrule Castle, you're put into anti-gravity, and if you hit all three spin boosters, it opens up a ramp that allows you to jump through a hologram of the Master Sword. The world of Zelda matches beautifully with the world of Mario, and the track is a thrilling rock. Come to think of it, it's funny how The Legend of Zelda has better representation in Mario Kart than it does in Smash Bros. 20. Twisted Mansion Out of every ghost-themed track in Mario Kart, this one takes the cake at being the best. There's a lot of anti-gravity to be found here, and then about halfway through, the mansion gets flooded, and you drive in the water. There's also a library shortcut you can take, statues that slam the road with hammers, and even the entrance to the water section looks like Bouldergeist. The spooky vibes are absolutely real with this track, and it's just a grand old time driving on it. The song also seems to have every single element of a stereotypical horror song. Minor key progression, falsetto choir, depressing strings, a scary church organ, and a random synth lead that sounds like aliens. 19. Koopa Cave This is the Wii track I expected to be in Wave 4, but we got it in Wave 5 instead. The track is just as great as I remembered, with all its twists and turns, the rushing river, and of course the pipe. There's a lot going on with this one, and it all works really well together. Admittedly, some of the aesthetics on the outside look a little basic compared to the original, but the pipe section is absolutely beautiful. The moving Koopa shell on the finish line is pretty cool too. I also like that some of the roads are wet and that the pipe is in anti-gravity. The pipe thing in particular makes it feel closer to the speed of the original track when compared to Mario Kart 7's remake. The boppin' music just makes the experience all the better, and it even changes for each individual area. 18. Waluigi Stadium it's a dirt bike stadium filled with rotating fireballs that's themed after our boy Waluigi. What's not to love? They really made sure the first GCN track in the BCP was a showstopper. The jumps in this one give you some gnarly airtime, which makes it feel like you're actually riding on a dirt bike getting some air. And those jumps are constantly coming your way. They even added some anti-gravity platforms to this one, which I really don't know why they're there, but they add even more spice to an already super spicy track. The glider on the second one is a nice touch as well. This track also has some really tight turns. The U-turn before the first big jump is especially gnarly since it's got dirt bumps right before it. All of these elements make for a fairly challenging, yet super fun race. 17. Dragon Driftway 
The coolest thing about this one is that it's based on Gobblegut from Mario Galaxy 2. And it's extremely twisty to reflect how Gobblegut slithers. That makes it a blast to drive around. It's also Chinese themed with an exotic aesthetic. It's really pleasing to the eyes. Now that I think about it, the fact that this is a track themed after a dragon is so awesome! Dragons are cool as hell, first of all, and it's an extremely creative idea. This track's attention to detail is astounding as well. And apparently, this track is usually disliked by players? That's so ludicrous, it's maddening! 16. Mount Wario You look at other snow tracks, and they all have a kind of similar theme going on. But this track just takes that and throws it out the window. You start off driving down a mountain with an icy road, and then you end up in a cave where you can trick off of some ice chunks. Then out of nowhere, you're riding on the side of a dam! What the hell?! The track takes you through a snowy forest after that, and to end it all, you drive down some kind of ski resort! Is this the Olympics? Like, what the hell is going on? The whole experience is absolutely mad, and I mean that in a good way. It's almost like driving on Yoshi's Island or one of the Woohoo tracks. You might think the ice at the beginning would ruin the track, but in actuality, it's so brief that it's barely a problem at all. 15. Rock Rock Mountain This one uses the glider to its fullest potential. And what a perfect place to do such a thing. Soaring through the air like this is really fulfilling. Plus you can trick off of the gusts of wind from the pipes. The landscape here is pretty nice as well, although I do miss the rocks being grey. I also like that the ending part with the falling boulders is in anti-gravity. It was begging for it. The layout of this track is on the basic side, but again, there's nothing quite like gliding for such a long time. Not to mention, the part with the falling boulders is pretty riveting. And when you clear the jump and see the mountain in full force, whoo! That's really something. And you can hit the Mario Kart song. I also just have to talk about this music. It is one of, if not the absolute best music piece to ever come out of the Mario Kart series. And by far one of the best songs Nintendo has ever composed. It's also pretty coincidental that a rock-themed racetrack uses rock music. Whether that was intentional or not, I have no idea. 14. Music Park Everyone loves this one, and how could you not? It's got head-bopping piranha plants, bouncing music notes that jump to the rhythm, and you even drive on a piano, xylophone, and glockenspiel. And those are all played along with the music. You also bounce off a big tambourine, and even little music notes appear when you hit the side rails. The track itself is a thrill to drive on as well, and the actual song is fantastic. It's also pretty cool looking visually. So much love was put into this track, even if it's not that much different than before. 13. Electrodrome Most people seem to prefer Music Park, but I've always been an Electrodrome believer. The aesthetics on this one are absolutely astounding, and there's a lot of cool stuff going on in the background. There's a crowd of Shy Guys and Koopas getting their groove on, which is shown on multiple Jumbotrons, and they look like they're having a blast. The entire track is also filled to the brim with fancy lights, and it too has head-bopping piranha plants. 
These ones pulsate colors, which makes them instantly better in my opinion. The anti-gravity part is really great too. The start has your cart leaving a rainbow trail behind it, then there's the little section where the road looks like strings and makes the music all filtery, and of course the end where you drive on some synth panels and it says, "Hey!" The whole thing is pure electrifying goodness. And I don't even need to mention that song. It is what some would call lovely jubbly. 12. Wario Stadium. This is another track that got a gnarly set of changes. First of all to the visuals, and secondly to the actual race track. It starts off with basic stadium track elements, having sharp turns, jumps over mud puddles, and rotating fire circles. Then out of nowhere, you enter anti-gravity on some raised metal platforms with even more rotating fire, and after doing a few jumps, there's a brief underwater section. This is a really cool spin on this general theme, and the amount of speed boosts and jump ramps make the experience feel fast and energized. There's also a bunch of other added details like a giant statue of Wario, some light signs and TV screens, and much more. They even changed it to daytime, which is a little weird, but I'm not complaining. People seem to hate the remixed song, but I personally think it's amazing. It actually fits well with both this track and Waluigi Pinball, whereas the original only really fit with Waluigi Pinball. 11. Piranha Plant Slide one of the most creative ideas for a racetrack ever made, and bar none, the best water-themed track in the series. Well, it's actually a fusion of a Mario Underground level, rushing water, pipes, and piranha plants. But, that mixture still gives us one of the coolest tracks in the whole series. It takes you through some kind of sewer thing with fast-moving water highlighting the road, and there's some big piranha plants to avoid, hence the track's name. But the best part is the end, where you dive into a huge pipe while in anti-gravity and end up in this underwater tank, where you'll find some cheap cheeps and pipes blowing water that you can trick off of. And when you exit the tank and glide high into the sky, that gives you a rush that a lot of tracks don't. Also, not only is the music seriously funky, but it also has elements of a bunch of classic Mario songs like the ground and underground themes. 10. Bowser Castle 3 Now this is how you remake a SNES track! I was kind of disheartened when we didn't get 3DS Bowser's Castle in Wave 6, but I'm more than happy with what we have here. The layout is rather simple, but like a lot of the other previous 2D tracks, it gained some crazy verticality. There's a ton of jumps found on this one as well, making the experience feel even more dynamic. The turns are super sharp, and there's a lot of things that can get in your way. Patches of dirt, lava geysers, thwomps, and more. It's cool that the cracks in the ground where the thwomps land have lava illuminating them. You can even drive on top of the walls separating the lanes on this last straightaway. And like any Bowser's Castle track, the aesthetics and scenery are villainous as hell, and I love it. I was worried Nintendo was gonna be lazy again and barely remix the music, but like Shroom Ridge, they done proved me wrong. As a matter of fact, I think it's by far the best SNES remix the series has ever seen. Same goes for the actual track, of course. 9. Waluigi Pinball I briefly mentioned this one earlier, 
It's a giant neon lit pinball machine themed after Waluigi! That in itself is amazing! And everything else about the track is solid too! It's one of the most vibrant and colorful tracks in the game. The layout is absolute madness, and it actually feels like you're inside a pinball machine. You'll have to avoid giant pinballs every now and then, and the item boxes even have an 8-bitified roulette sound. You also get 8-bit sounds when going over the speed boosts and shooting out of the cannon. Like I mentioned earlier, the layout of this track is nothing short of riveting. But the best part is the pinball table at the end. The pinballs can be challenging to dodge sometimes, and having all the bumpers and stuff just makes it even spicier. My only real qualms with this track are A, missed opportunity to use anti-gravity, and B, they got rid of the sound for exiting the pinball table. But honestly, those are barely an issue seeing as how incredible the rest of the track is. Plus, you can hear the exit sound in the background of the track flyover. A. Rainbow Rug. This has got to be the most underrated track in the whole series. People whine that it feels more like just a space station track than an actual Rainbow Road. <laughs> Who the nether cares? The futuristic space station theme is so damn cool! The aesthetics on this track are amazing! and it's the perfect blend of difficult and fun. Around the middle of the track, the road splits into two, and this actually works pretty well since neither one is advantageous over the other. Not to mention, you can do some really cool shit in this section, especially in 200cc. Some of the roads also form the shape of an A, Going down the huge spiral at the end and building a purple drift is really fun as well. And oh my goodness, the music is absolutely phenomenal! It's by far the best Rainbow Road song the series has ever seen. As awesome as this track is though, I am willing to admit that the creativity of its layout could have been pushed a lot further. 7. Grumble Volcano Ah oh, yes, casually driving through a volcano. Just your average day for your boy Mario. Anywho, it's kinda strange that it took us until Mario Kart Wii to give a lava themed track that isn't Bowser's Castle. This is also a track of extremes. People either really hate it or really love it. I'm obviously on the side that loves it. The main gimmick of this one goes like this. Lap 1, nothing special. Lap 2, hmm, something doesn't feel right. Lap 3, half the track is gone! This makes the track feel really alive, and it makes an already fairly challenging track even harder. There's some smaller volcanoes outside that erupt meteors, which will crash onto the road and leave a patch of flames. There's even some hotheads at the end with the split path. The whole thing is pure hellish insanity, and it's seriously entertaining. 6. Neo Bowser City it's so weird seeing a Bowser track that isn't his castle, but that's one of the big reasons this one is so noble. This is also one of the best looking tracks in the game by far. It's set in a rainy futuristic city at night filled with neon lights and glass tunnels with flying vehicles. It also has an enormous emphasis on hexagons, like, even the Bowser logo is hexagonal. And I view that as a good thing, cause, fun fact of the day, my favorite shape is a hexagon. 
This track's layout is also one of the most riveting in the game. There are a ton of turns, and a lot of them are just ridiculous. It even has anti-gravity on the spiral at the end. Everything about this track is awesome. And you gotta love how the song is just an amalgamation of other Mario Kart songs. And that's not even mentioning how exciting and catchy it is. It's one of the rare instances where it not having a lot of changes is a good thing. Cause it really didn't need a drastic remix. Fuck! We Rainbow Road! Boy, oh boy! Talk about a nostalgia trip! I nearly cried the first time I played this track! But nostalgia aside, this track is nothing short of bea beautiful. The glider section reminds me of the Bifrost. The experience of this track is extraordinarily dynamic, and I wouldn't like it any other way. Making the whole thing anti-gravity was a really smart choice as well. One moment you're going around crazy curves, then you're making some ridiculous jumps, and so on. You will never ever get bored of playing this one. And that's what makes it so great. Nintendo even went out of their way to preserve the meteor effect for falling off the track. It's funny that they did that when some of their other choices are straight up lazy. Looking at you, Mario Circuit 3 and Sunset Wilds. The music also blew me away when I first heard it. Changing the lead instrument from a flute thingy to a synth was the best choice they could have possibly made. This could not have been a more perfect way to end the Booster Course Pass. 4. Mute City An F-Zero track in Mario Kart? Now it's a party! It's insane how much love was poured into this track. The visuals are absolutely amazing and look just like the kind of setting you'd find in an F-Zero game. And the fact that the whole thing is an anti-gravity plus the sheer amount of speed boost makes racing on it feel pretty much just as fast and frantic as F-Zero. They even made the healing pads give you coins, which is ingenious! The track is super fun and exhilarating to drive on, and you also gotta love the show ya moves sign. I know I do. You also know you've got a good track when it has its own start jingle and results music. A lot of people are bedazzled by the song for the track itself, but I personally always found it disappointing. It just doesn't fit with the vibe of F-Zero. F-Zero is meant for electronic rock, not jazz. 3. Big Blue This is basically Mute City on steroids. It still has lots of speed boosts and coin pads, but it has a lot more jumps, and the layout is much crazier. This one even throws in rushing water for the second segment, which adds fuel to the fire. There's also a couple other features that help it stand out. In addition to the unique results music and star jingle, the announcer from F-Zero X says, Yeah! The final lap! When you reach the third segment. Not only that, but the final lap song isn't just a sped up version of the normal song. No, it's totally different, yet it still has the same vibe. This references the final lap songs in F-Zero GX, which are just like that. Different melody, same energy. The aesthetics on this track are just as awesome as Mute City's, and again, it actually looks like something you'd see in F-Zero. 
these two tracks really show that F-Zero is gone, but not forgotten. 2. 3DS Rainbow Road Rainbow Road is always a fun experience, but none can compare to this one. It starts off like your average Rainbow Road, with some sharp turns and a bunch of jumps. But then out of nowhere, you're driving on Saturn's rings! That's so cool! Then you find yourself on a bouncy road where you can do tricks, and right after that, you drive on the moon with bouncing chomp balls in the way. You also enter anti-gravity here, which makes perfect sense. Shortly after that, you can glide through the star rings with a bunch of giant asteroids around you. This track has absolutely no limits to its beauty. The whole thing is such a magical experience. Also, can we talk about how fucking incredible the road looks? Just look at it! It is, without question, the coolest looking road in the whole series. It's also the only rainbow road in this game where we drive on actual rainbows and not just rainbow colored tiles. There's not much else to say other than that this track is more than just a track. It's an adventure. Oh wait, there's the music. Yeah, it's a banger and a hack. And number one is Bowser's Castle. What else did you expect? I've been a sucker for Bowser and all things related to him for a really long time. And this Bowser's Castle, in my opinion, is the best of them all. The difficulty is really high in this one. The turns are extremely sharp, and there's a ton of obstacles to avoid like fire bars, giant boulders, and an enormous molten Bowser that punches the road so hard that it undulates. Speaking of which, I have never been able to get past how badass this Bowser statue looks. It is the best looking Bowser statue the series has ever seen without a doubt. The rest of the aesthetics are amazing as well. Oh yeah, I also forgot to mention that there's also lasers on the second and third laps. I mean, how cool is that? This track is just insanity at its finest, and despite the difficulty, it's extremely fun if you know what you're doing. The rock and music also sets an edgy tone, and I absolutely adore it. In the unlikely event we get a whole new Mario Kart, I really don't see how Nintendo could top this masterpiece of a track. Boy, that was the most time-consuming video I've ever done in my life. If you've made it to this point, give yourself the fattest pat on the back. Ranking 96 racetracks is a daunting task in itself, but the fact that all but two of the tracks have redeeming qualities makes it ten times harder. In any event, how would you guys rank all the tracks in this game? Let me know in the comments! With all that said, I hope you guys have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time!